Okay, webcam reset. Now let's do this. Desmond Miles, Abstergo's preliminary medical report. Yeah. Found Subject 17, 17's initial medical report after a team picked him up in New York City and flew him over to the Abstergo campus in Rome. Oh, so this is when he was first captured. He was fit and cleared for the Animus in September of 2012, willingly collaborating in the project, and yet he was found dead three months later in a cave in upstate New York, apparently on the run. What happened to him? Why did, did he leave? So, you do work for Abstergo, don't you? But you're just kind of being kept in the dark? Menstrual disorders, N.A. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's amusing, I'm sorry. Like, again, I can't get behind the idea of the giant cyborg animus arm that they used in the movie. That It worked for what they did with it in the movie, I guess. But, like, there was one thing that the movie did that I was, I was actually, I did like. And it was the fact that in the games they talk about the severe side effects of overexposure to the animus all the time. But you never actually get to see any of it. In the movie, you get to see it. Callum has like a full-on seizure at one point. And they're like, oh god, medic! Like, yeah, he was foaming at the mouth and everything. It was, it was, it was scary to watch. But let's see. Patient has no active complaints. Okay. No... Ah, oh, fuck it. I'll, I'll read the text. <laughs> Patient has no active complaints. No active distress. No prior history. Blood pressure normal, 112 over 78. Mm -hmm. Primary blood analysis, no significant traces of chemicals that could lead to neurological disorder. No indication that patient would be prone to neurosis. Unlike previous subjects, patient is psychologically stable. Uh, mm. You are clear to proceed. Damien Saravakos. Interesting. Okay. So that's his medical report from when they first captured him. Wanted poster. There he is. Abstergo had a thing for Desmond. They went for him, specifically. A team was assigned to pick up a person of interest in September of 2012 in Washington Square Park. They didn't even take him back to the Philly office. They flew him directly to Dr. Warren Vidic in Rome. If that's not some serious interest, I don't know what that is. Dude, I was like 16 when I played the first Assassin's Creed game. I am now 23. That kind of boggles my mind that this series has been a part of my life for so long. To the point where I'm only two years younger than Desmond now. <laughs> like, what? Post, yep, okay. Postmodern report. Dug these out from Case Fisher's files. May 9th. Proof that Desmond's DNA found its way back to Abstergo after all. How did he die? And what's up with those burns on his arm? Yeah, what indeed. Oh my god, god that was five years ago. Five years ago that's crazy to me and people are still bitching about it <laughs> five years holy crap last emails oh no okay william miles's final messages to his son desmond miles senior was in cairo when abstergo found him looks like subject 17 busted him out of our italian facility a few days before he died yeah he did that's right that's one of the miss missions from Assassin's Creed 3. I know you think it's dangerous for me to head to Egypt on my own, and you're probably right. Wouldn't be surprised if Cross is already there. They're looking these things down, walking, looking these things down left and right, okay. But we don't have a lot of options. If there's a chance to grab the last power source, we've got to take it. I promise I'll be careful. I've been fighting these bastards since before you were born, literally. I think I've read these before. They're gonna be here soon, trapped me in this damn museum. Should have taken more precautions. I'm sorry, son. It wasn't fair for me to come down on you the way I- Oh, he didn't think he was going to make it out. You never asked for any of this, and I should have been more understanding. I hope you can forgive me. I love you. Oh, God. He, on he did not think he was making it out of that museum alive. Oh, that sucks. Okay. I think- yeah, Those sound familiar. At least the first one sounded familiar. Oh, here we go. Oh, snap. Okay. Security footage from Warren Vidic's office a few days before Subject 17's death. It's hard to tell, but I'm pretty sure it's William Miles, Desmond's father. Why did Abstergo detain him? <laughs> so, what is this- Layla, what is this chick doing? Does she work for Abstergo and she knows there's something bigger going on, but she has no idea? Documentation. Holy, holy, holy. Okay. New employee handbook. <laughs> Immersion and physicality are combined, so the airy was the big arm, wasn't it? Biotechnologies played a critical role in creating the epidural system mm -hmm, used by the airy animus. They had to hook Callum up to the epidural first, back here. 
uh, before putting him up in the giant arm. So this is the giant arm animus. It's called the Airy. Okay, I it never had an official name in the movie, I don't think. Unless I just missed it. Instead of trying to contain the bleeding effect, the Airy unleashes it, mm, and uses its potential to blur the lines between the user's reality and the simulation they're engaged in, the Airy can only be used in a controlled medical environment. There it is. That's the giant arm from the movie. Which was weird. But it's official canon now, so deal with it. Okay. And then, of course, the portable animus, the sarcophagus, which is what Layla is using right now. Just like the Airy, the simulation is not transmitted to the user's brain. It is physically rendered through the user's organs and interpreted by the brain as being real. Hence why she needed the stuff for her kidneys. The epidural connection has been replaced by a hematological link. It sequences the information stored in the user's red blood cells. The result is fast, intense, and interwined to the user's biological functions. Well, that's pretty cool. Okay, that's pretty much all I need to know. Field briefing. What am I doing out here? Oh, Diana Geary. Okay, so D. D and Geary are the same person. Got it. Level clearance three and up. That's pretty high. October 20th. Historical tactical team Layla Hassan and Diana Geary scheduled departure on October 22nd. Locate and recover artifact of high interest in Katara depression. That's a region we can explore in, in Egypt, in, in the open world. I saw it on the map when I was scrolling around. Forecasted location at uploaded coordinates, unidentified, unidentified cave, grotto, hollow geological formation. Team is to work remotely with technician on premises and medical officer stationed at fixed accommodation location. If found, the artifact is to be swiftly retrieved and taken back to HBE. Contact John Kane in London for paperwork and travel arrangements. Fully stocked rental vehicle will be made available at Hangar 3C upon arrival in HBE. What is HBE? Damn it! President voucher and valid accommodation information will be uploaded to the vehicle's GPS. Okay, so I'm here potentially to either recover the apple or whatever is in the vault that the apple opens. Interesting. Okay. But I have mail. Oh my god. Look at all this! God damn it! Morning, Sophia. I spent the whole night looking at the sketches you sent me, and you're all looking at it the wrong way. If you really are thinking about a robotic arm for the Animus Airy, then my only advice is this. Mark my words. Inverted six-axis motion rig. You want to be able to give the subject some leeway, some sense of freedom, and yet allow the core of the machine to stay connected no matter what kind of crazy gymnastics your subject is performing. So make sure the hydraulic act actuators are top-notch nothing under 6,000 ISP you'll know just by listening to them if they sound like a groom on the last night of his bachelor bender change them oh god <laughs> they aren't worth your time and they'll only obstruct your subjects movement all right from Sophia to Layla so here we go here's Marion Cotillard <laughs> responding to us Layla, just to make sure I understood you correctly, you're actually proposing that we suspend our subjects in midair by the means of a large motorized mechanical device? I must have read your email five times just to make sure. At first I thought you were joking, but I dropped the idea in Gabriel King's ear, our chief engineer here in Madrid, and that's where the facility was in the movie, was in Madrid. And his initial reaction was quite like mine until something changed in his smile. Let's say, were we to consider a six-axis motion rig, this is all hypothetical of course, but please indulge me, would there be any plausible compatibility between this rig and the epidural bearing I showed you the other day? Could we ensure the stability of the needle and its positioning to the subject's backbone? Youchies. I feel like I'm teetering on the frontiers of science and nonsense. It's crazy talk, but it's exhilarating. Crazy talk. Sophia. Okay. Well, obviously, Layla convinced her to do it. So the, the airy animus in the movie was Layla's idea. The character we're playing as, it was her idea. That's pretty neat. From Layla to Geary. I need one of those. I just visited your online shop for the first time and I must say you hide your cards pretty well, Miss Diana Geary. Who knew a poised and professional medical officer could have such a foul potty mouth? Needless to say, I'm buying a bunch of your cross stitch patterns. I'm keeping some for me, but I'll also offer some of them around. I think you have the perfect one for Otto Berg. He keeps taking my parking space. <laughs> That's awesome. Ottoberg don't give a fuck. Oh shit, from Layla to Ottoberg, speaking of which, about the parking space! Okay, 
Mr. Berg, I'm afraid you've developed the bad habit of parking in my allotted space. Now, I know you're higher than me in the Abstergo food chain, and your car clearly has less rust than my 1987 sports car, but my HR hiring paper clearly states that 23FG is Layla Hassan's, so I would appreciate it if you could park your vehicle somewhere else. Does he get back to her? Oh, shit, he does. Uh-oh. Here we go. The day you get... Okay, hold on. Can I do it in his voice? <coughs> hold on. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna totally butcher this, but... The day you get an assignment done properly is the day I might deign to consider your request. <laughs> now, you can place a formal complaint, but knowing how much you cherish procedures, I'll assume you probably won't even know where to look for the form. Also, I'm keeping your little cross-stitching gift. Oh my god, she actually gave it to him! <laughs> even though it's offensive, the workmanship is quite spectacular! Oh, that's amazing! I couldn't keep- I couldn't keep the voice through that. I- I'm sorry, but I did my best. Okay. Holy shit, that's amazing. Can I see this? Is it a cross that just says fuck you on it? Probably. From Layla to Sophia, again. Sophia, hello! Don't leave me hanging here. Tell me, how's the work on the device progressing? Did you guys finally build a prototype? You can't just ask stuff and then shut me out. It doesn't work that way. Why can't you just fly me there? I mean, even if it's just a temporary position. Something interim? Friggin' Abstergo Janitor, for all I care. I could help your team way better on location than through this free, cheap-ass, once-in-a-blue-moon email consul consultation. It makes me feel dirty every single time you do it, and I've told you how I felt before. Yet here we are again. Either you don't care, or this Eureka effect is getting you drunk on epiphanies. Think about it, Sophia. This is really getting frustrating. You have to be kidding me. Sophia, I just heard you guys are working on a portable version of the Aerie. Is that true? A portable Animus? How could you not tell me? How can you still send me some bland email asking seemingly innocent questions and then turn around and work on the most exciting freaking machine ever without even letting me in on it while knowing it has my name all over it? Just who do you think I am? A fortune-telling machine? A secret little muse hiding in the shadows? Those were good for absinthe-soaked 19th century poets and they all died of syphilis. Enough with the penny haikus of wisdom. I've given you all I have. My time, my brain power, my trust. And if that's not worth a place within your team, I'm not sure what is. Still no response. And then this is Geary to Layla. Christmas vacation. Hey, Layla. Alan Riken died while attending something he felt he had to wear a black cape to attend to. That's creepy, I know. And you're worried sick about Sophia. That's understandable. There's nothing on his daughter in the papers of the Abstergo mem- or the Abstergo mem memos. So the fact that she's not answering doesn't mean she's in harm's way. Pretending your little tinkering project is helping you change your mind is bogus, and you know it. Why don't you come to my folks' place for the Christmas holiday? We'll celebrate whatever it is you wish to celebrate, including the famous secular tradition of not celebrating anything at all, if that's what works for you. My mom will cook some pumpkin pie, my dad will ask us why we won't shoot at rodents. <laughs> Then we'll eat a non-vegan breakfast in a dodgy casino before we spend the day outside snowmobiling. I love North Dakota, but it could sure use a bit of Layla Hassan. Say yes, it'll be good for both of us. Date. North Dakota! My mom's from there. My whole side of the family is from Fargo. You sure know how to make a girl happy. Rodents in a dodgy casino, I think I'll pass. Aw, there's nothing I want more than being with my little stone-cold crazy machine right now. I've just come up with an idea for the sequencer and I can't get it out of my head. So far it's only a sketch on a dirty placemat, so I'll have to- I have to get busy if I want to test it before I go into retirement, if that ever happens. Sorry, I'm being an ass. It's a very nice offer, Dee, and I appreciate your concern, but I'll be fine. Don't worry, I always am. If you say so, let me know if you need any help with those reports. How about we get out of here and grab some takeout? You can show me the progress on your little project, I might have an idea for the dialysis unit. Okay. Where am I? D, change of plans. I know you're waiting in your little hotel room in downtown San Francisco right now and you think I'm heading towards the wharf, but you're wrong. I had an idea and I'm about to board a flight for Tokyo. I'm on my way to on Onagawa, Japan. Don't freak out. I know what I'm doing. Just be ready to pick up on your side in 24 hours or so. I'll need your remote assist. Cover for me if dispatch calls in. Dude, what are you doing? Hey D, I wish this was an audio message so you could hear the nice roar of the portable animus. Everything seems to be in perfect order. The software is running, my vitals are showing perfectly, and all the tests done on the DNA samples are turning up positive. I've combined some strange strands, and somehow the sequencer always returns a valid simulation to play. 
I haven't dared to go into any of them, not alone, not without you, and the Animus isn't ready for a live test either. Maybe I'm just buying time, but that combined strand of both you and Milton looks tempting. All in due time. All in due time. Milton. God, I've been in here forever, but okay. From Diana to Layla. Are you flippin' insane? There's so much to yell about, I don't even know where to start. Milton's DNA? Really? Layla, how can you bring him into this? The poor guy, give him a break. I mean, you want to use Subject 17's DNA? Fine, he's dead. But Milton? My Milton? You access his file to save his ass and you think stealing his DNA profile at the same time is okay? I'll tell you once, my, my man is off limits. You erase the data now. So Diana's husband? Boyfriend? I don't know. Oh, and yes, there was the second thing. Do not go into your animus. You're a whiz and a genius and a geek and an engineer extraordinaire, but you're not insane. We don't know if it works, we don't know what it does, and we don't even know what kind of simulation it runs. Remember the story about Eileen Bach, Subject Zero? Boy, do I. The surrogate initiative. She was exploring other people's genetic memories and ended up dead with an effing fried brain. You're not toying with an Omega animus, Layla. It's the real thing. And if you ever want to go in there, we'll need to take all the proper precautions. Please, Layla, I'd hate to see something happen to you. Just wait for me, okay? That was back in September. October 20th, eight days ago. Egypt, here we go. Hey D, can you pack the sealed container with the immunosuppressants, just in case? I know the assignment states we're going after yet another artifact of high interest, but, well, you never know. What if there's something else? Can you imagine? This could be a chance to try out our version of the portable animus in the field. I'm not talking about actually synchronizing with the simulation. Well, I might, but I'm not, really. I promise. Okay. <laughs> But you never know. Maybe I'll just do a sequencing test if I find something. If. See? It's conditional. I'll repeat it one more time. If. Feel better? Time to pack. Still good for tonight? Drinks are on me. Last one. Layla to Diana, what if? D. Wow, why is my head still spinning? I barely had more than a few drinks. But I just thought of something. You know how the anima sequences DNA to run simulations based on genetic memories? What if, and this might be the fifth old-fashioned talking here, uh, what if we could actually find a way to do the same through inorganic matter? What? Woman, you're drunk. <laughs> okay, maybe molecules are too big. Maybe we need to consider the, that the information might be stored deep down at the subatomic level. Why would memory latch uniquely onto organic molecules? I mean, I've seen stranger things, but somehow I just can't find any plausible reason why it wouldn't. I wish my middle-of-the-night emails were more about a date I just kicked out or an obnoxious neighbor. Sorry, I guess you're stuck with me, lucky girl. You're drunk. You're drunk. Non-organic matter having memories? Memories. Brain. Blood. Organs. A wall doesn't have any of those. Riding my bike in Queens without my training wheels. Aw, she was a cutie. Helmet looks a little big for you. <laughs> of course it is, they always are. 94, the year I was born, up to no good. Taking a part of telephone. All right, Alexander Graham Bell. New York City, 2000. There they are. Backstage at the Raw Victoria concert at Madison Square Garden. That is pretty cool. <laughs> Berkeley, California, 2004. Best use of Berkeley's dorm, sleeping. <laughs> She's like, no press, no press! The Call of Adventure, see you later, Philly. My entry for the do-it-yourself pinball contest. <laughs> Pretty cool. And 2017. Hey, I'm Layla, ask me anything. Oh, that's what AMA stands for, that's right, ask me anything, got it. Forgot about that, audio. Oh shit, we have audio files now too? So long. Thanks for all the fish, Berkeley. <laughs> That's a reference. March 21st, 2006. The day Layla Hassan drops out of college. That's right, Professor Moore. I'm not finishing that Jane Eyre paper. I got a job, and I'm headed to Philly next week. This whole classroom thing, it's not for me. Mom and Dad are freaking out, but they'll accept it. I'll be working towards something real, making real money, and I'll be closer to home. Not that I'll visit any more often. Sophia promised there would always be a place for me at Observo, as long as I show them what I can do with a circuit board and a pair of pliers. Sure, I'll have to work my way up to a place on her special project, but that doesn't matter. 
It won't be long before she or her father, Mr. Alan Rickin, notices what I'm capable of and asks for my help on the Animus. So, is it Rickin or Rikin? Everywhere else I've seen it's Rickin. She just said Rickin. In the movie, it's Rikin. Of course, those people had British accents. But still. Like, make up your mind on how things are pronounced, damn it! Okay. <laughs> Your memes. I swear, I get more done reading the latest copy of Wired on the toilet than the rest of the guys do all day in the lab. I mean, the body band? Really? If people can't take a walk on their own, they aren't going to listen to a watch that tells them to do it either. This is all so pointless. I should just go back to... Wait. That's probably what the body band would tell me to do. What I should do is build something that will simultaneously blow people's minds and the doors off the Animus Project. Nothing at Abstergo Fitness is going to be big enough for that. I'm bored as hell. But there's nothing like boredom to stimulate creativity. Yep. I think the body band needs a little adjustment to its language processing program. Okay. <laughs> She was on the toilet saying that. <laughs> the right decision always feels like home. My stuff's the same. My locker smells the same. It's like I never left. But I did. And I can never unlearn what I know now. How will it change my work at the Historical Research Division? Hard to say. All I know is that it will. Our Dom booked us a lunch. Nothing fancy. She wanted me to meet Deanna Geary, my new medical officer. She looks like she was born in the middle of a cornfield, but... She seems okay. It's North Dakota for you. I can't believe she left homemade cookies on my desk. I don't know why I told her about getting stood up last weekend. I never talk about personal stuff at work. At least it seems like I can trust her. You need that to stay alive in the field. Too bad most of Abstergo's tactical units don't consider trust a priority. Yeah, well... That's cause they're dicks! Okay. Trigger- Hey, Halloween. Portable Animus. No mention in the official credits, but all those emails, all those middle-of-the-night phone calls from Madrid, there's a lot of me in there. Sophia, if I'd known you just wanted to strip mine my brain and leave me in the dark, I never would have followed you. Go away! There's no candy here! Nothing in life is ever free. Ever. The Animus. I can tell. I know it wouldn't have worked without my advice. Just look how they did... The heat sink, the VRMs, the high amperage rating by transistor. It was me who told them it would offset failure of the... What's this? Hello there, DNA reader module. Are you ringing my doorbell? Maybe there's some candy here after all. Yeah, they stole her ideas. Sophia took her advice and then just shut her out. Bitch. Okay. I've come to the conclusion that Sophia is shit at hiring staff. The entire Madrid facility. Ugh. How do they not see it? It would be so easy. You just have to parse the genetic memory input and work from smaller data pools. You could even process incomplete samples and still create a reliable model for high levels of synchronization. The reader module and the decryption software would need an update, but it's doable. Madrid's probably congratulating themselves just for getting this far. Meanwhile, I'm partying with some congealed veggie curry three plasma screens, a disassembled animus, and Raw Victoria's debut album on loop. Sahetic. Dee will be mad when she sees how I use Milton's DNA, but what did she expect when she asked me for help? I needed someone's genetic profile to test the animus, and, well, his was right there. All in the name of science. A uh, girl called Deanna. I like morning briefings. They're short, minimal nonsense, and they have free coffee. No downtime this week. They're putting me and Dee on a plane to Alexandria two days from now. I don't get why Hathaway's in such a rush. We're being deployed to extract an artifact. If it were a person of interest, the push would make more sense. A person could be halfway across the world in a couple of hours. But an artifact that's been sitting around for 2,000 years, it's not going anywhere. An artifact of high interest. Heard that before. It always ends up being some crappy pottery shard or half an old book. Yeah. My animus runs on DNA, not tableware. 
It'll be strange visiting Egypt for the first time since 2013. Back then, I went looking for my roots and found trouble instead. It's good that Dee's coming. She always keeps me from doing anything too stupid. What does that mean, you found trouble instead? Interesting. Uh-oh. Found the mother load. Here we go. Turns out, the artifact of high interest is also a person of interest. A mummy. And a golden opportunity. I've informed Dee of some changes I'm making to our assignment parameters. She acted mad, but I know she's eager to see my animus field tested. Abstergo won't mind. Well, they would if they found out, but they won't. <laughs> Hathaway's intel was a disaster. They have no idea what's going on with this extraction. Field tech is fun and all, but that's not why I left Berkeley. If the animus lets me ride DNA this old, if the reader can model the missing codons and extrapolate the genetic memories that aren't mine, Sophia would lose her Abstergo. Abstergo will come to me on their hands and knees. My name will be right up there with Warren Biddix. Anameta Kideminda. Too bad the Madrid facility got blown up. But I bet they'll build a new one soon. This one will be in Philly. And its lead engineer will be Leila Hassan. And there she goes. Alright then, yeah. The facility in Madrid that Callum was kept at was, uh... Destroyed. <laughs> I didn't get the impression it was blown up. But, yeah, it's not exactly occupied by Abstergo anymore. So basically, Rebecca Crane is to the assassins as Layla Hassan is to Abstergo, right? She's like the big tech geek. I can... I deleted stuff. Email from Sophia to... Layla, there's no nice way to put this, so I'll be honest. We met years ago. I remember seeing you for the first time crossing McLaughlin Hall at Berkeley and thinking just how you would thrive in Abstergo's Young Innovators program. And then I watched you make the jump into the great unknown. But the fact is, even after all the insight you've given us, I'm still not sure I can place my trust in you to be part of the Animus Project here in Madrid. How many sanctions were added to your operation file after I asked you to respect the boundaries of your assignments? Too many, Layla. Too many. You have a brilliant mind, but you are also unpredictable. I cannot afford to have a loose cannon in the lab putting the team's progress at risk. Lot of good it did ya! It's hard enough to handle the subject as it is. I wish you would put your spirit to greater use, that I could give you a task and know deep down that the next morning I would find you ironing out the details and not in the lounge rearranging a highly classified piece of code on an unsecured laptop. Work hard, Layla, and forget about one day moving to the Animus Project. Oh. Focus on the challenges of the historical research division. They are tailored for you. Perhaps one day, if you change your ways, I'll reach out again, just as I did in Berkeley. But until then, I ask you to respect my decision and stop contacting me. Subject, farewell, Layla. Oh, that sucks. That's sad. From Layla to A and Z H. Parents? Ah! You, are, are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Ashraf Hassan, as in Ashraf Ismail, the creative director. <laughs> I get it. You're funny. Oh, it was. Oh, she never sent it. Hey, mom. Hey, dad. It's been a while. I hope you're doing okay, and my overprotective brothers too. Next assignment is taking me to Egypt. I'm leaving tomorrow, and well, it made me think of you. Of course, I'm not supposed to disclose any of my mission details, but you know how bad I am with rules. Going back to Egypt. I don't know. It feels right. I wanted you to know, not sure it'll make you happy, but everything's falling into place, it seems. You never forgave me for dropping out of Berkeley, but in the end, I got a place at Abstergo. I got to make a name for myself. And now it's leading me back to the country of our ancestors, on official business, no less, and not on some backpacking pipe dream. Those were your exact words, Dad. So yeah, I thought maybe you'd like to know that. I could fly back in for a visit. When I come back, we could invite Rami and Caden and talk like adults. Well, maybe not Caden. I'm still not sure. He knows how to adult. <laughs> and I could tell you about my trip and something else I've been working on. Not sure you'd approve, but I think I'm on the brink of something big. And if I can just show you, you'll understand why I left Berkeley like I did. Being stubborn is the best thing you could wish on a daughter, Dad. I promise. Yeah, I killed the family phone 20 years ago, but because of it and because of all the other appliances I might have sacrificed along the way, I can build a mean machine today. Okay. 
from Layla to her brother Rami. Not sent. Subject, just do it. Rami, long story short, I'm standing in the middle of Alexandria's very busy souk district. Egypt, not Virginia, Rami. <laughs> and I have no time for email etiquette. I just need you to send me this picture of mom. The one we took in Florida while we were visiting all the parks. Disney World. <laughs> I think I just found the perfect headscarf to replace the one she lost while we were on the trip years ago. Oh, and don't tell me, don't tell them where I am. It's a surprise. She never sent it. Oh, why didn't you send it? Damn it. Well, that seems like pretty much everything.